are you? My name is Christian Green. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a graphic artist and painter. Okay, so we're gonna do that over again. Make sure you project. Okay. Or you can say who, uh... All right, you're gonna introduce yourself. Um, in three, <clears throat> two, one. Do I see through your or? Yeah. Chris. Oh, everybody know you as Chris? Pretty much. Nobody's okay. walking by, oh, what's up, C3? No, I ain't famous. Yeah. It's not like that yet. Face. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll try it again. I can say I go by that name. Uh, hey, my name is Christian Green. Uh, I go by C3 Art from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a freelance artist and graphic designer. Did I decide to do art full time? Um, it would have to be in college, around my sophomore year. Once I had switched my major on over to art from computer science, um, just was doodling around and stuff like that, and really, I guess, doing classwork, if you will, um, with us doing simple paintings. And I did some paintings for some friends, and they just, you know, just gave them away as gifts and stuff like that. But then, when I said, "All right, let me take this serious," is when a friend of mine was buying. Um, one of my first pieces that I did and he was you know moving into his new apartment and he was like hey I want that piece and he, he bought it and after that I saw it hanging up on his wall and we just kept on going ever since then. Um, what made me stay in Nashville was at the time Nashville was like not as big as, it's, as it is now. Um, it was real real quiet. Um, I've lived in Atlanta and, and in New York so I'm used to the whole fast paced you know, lifestyle type thing. So Nashville was real, real quiet and real, real calm to me. So when I switched over my major, I called my dad. I was like, look, I don't want to do this no more. Computer science is not for me. I don't want to be stressed out and you know, sit in front of a computer all day looking at numbers and stuff like that. And he's like, so hey, why don't you do some artwork? And I was like, what? You know, I really wasn't expecting that, but he was sitting in my room, which turned into an office when I left for college. And I had a lot of art just sitting around for my drawings and stuff like that. So at that moment, I went, switched my major, and um, I told them what I was gonna do. Then they asked me, okay, so what are you gonna do with the art once you, you know, you get in there, you get your degree and stuff like that. And I told them I wanted to be a graphic artist. And I wanted to do advertisement, and design posters and billboards and stuff like that. And then the painting just came along with it. For me, uh, personally, well, let me not say personally, but for me, struggles that I, um, deal with are like you know sometimes you have a creator's block you know you look at other people's success um, you worry about you know is it perfect when it's never gonna be perfect and me I'm kind of a perfectionist uh, being that I do graphic design I'm used to everything just being you know, clean cut crispy you know not too cluttered and stuff like that so a struggle might be something not being as clean and as clear as I want it to be uh, creative block is a number one, you know, you get into your little funk where you want to paint, but it's not coming out right. Um, you know, you're not coming up with anything creative or have a story to tell within your art. So my very, very first painting was a um, eight by six little canvas. It was real, real small. Um, I had just came home for it was one of them college breaks. I was home for the weekend, sitting in my room and um, I had the canvas. So I started painting and I did a uh, Japanese uh, street. And uh, that was it, and it was abstract. And that was my first painting, painting. And I still have it to this day, so hanging up right outside my kitchen. Now that I look at it, I sucked. But back then it was like, man, I'm tight, like I'm cold, like I'm the man, you know? For me, I guess you can call it a signature, if you will. Um, the little like splatter thing. I'll make something super, super clean and outline it and make sure it's right. And then after that, I just, Throw some colors on and I splatter my paint and that's when you lose control and that's my unique thing that separates me from other artists and each painting that I do also has a, a meaning behind it as to why I painted it and where that meaning or that memory came from from that painting. It's gonna sound a little out there but um, the concept for each piece really is no concept. Uh, just kind of look at something and be like, oh, I remember that, I should paint that. Or, what would be dope? Or what's something that you forgot about? Like I did a Jetson series and I was having a conversation with two of my friends. We were just talking about the future. 
and how the future that we have now, or the present time that we have now, which was the future back then, for the Jets since they had, you know, the FaceTime and the walking the dog treadmill and all that stuff like that. And it was like, yo, we have all of that stuff now, isn't that crazy? So that idea just popped right there, boom, let's do the Jetsons. So I did the Jetsons and did the whole series and it just, it was awesome, man. Message to the kids, don't stop. If you're gonna start and you wanna do it, don't do it because it's cool. Don't do it because you see somebody else doing it. Do it because you wanna do it and do it to the best you know, ability that you can. Whether you want to be famous, you're just doing it just to do it. It's a stress reliever. Give it your all. And go for it. Don't stop. Well, I did a few showcases with the Spread Love uh, group here in Nashville. And they do a lot of uh, concerts and events here in Nashville that do help out around the community. Um, and they reached out to me when they first started up, like the different tributes and stuff like that. I was like, hey, we're having a show. Come on out, bring some artwork. And it just helped me... Uh, Pretty much just get a, a not a following but more people look at my artwork from the art that i bought to the shows and that was pretty cool um, to work with them and they do a lot of stuff here in the nashville community things that i've done in the community not just here in nashville but i work with the educate me foundation in the trap garden uh, those two friends that i went to college with and I design most of their stuff for the foundation and the Educate Me Foundation. And what they do, um, Educate Me Foundation is about um, empowering youth and getting them to college and helping them get their stuff together for college. Whether you want to go to college or not, just giving them that opportunity to see what it's like. A lot of kids don't get that um, opportunity to visit a college campus or they don't know how to get started on their college career, if you will. So um, I design for them. I'm proud to be a partner or, you know, a good friend or whatever you want to call it, a creative person working with them. And the Trap Garden is based here in Nashville. And um, what they do is teach the urban community how to garden and grow fresh vegetables on their own and uh, educate people on the importance of growing your own vegetables. And they do a lot of different things around the whole southern region, just pretty much everywhere um, here in the United States uh, with Toyota stuff like that, um, on different events with vegetables and going healthy and going green and stuff like that. So besides painting, I do graphic design. So I mainly design logos, flyers. Um, that's pretty much about it. Um, that and my painting. Also draw, can't paint without drawing. Um, and that's pretty much it. I can put paint on pretty much anything. Uh, Work-life balance is really, really important. I have a four-year-old son as well. So he's my, my little sidekick. Uh, he helps me out with some of my paintings and some of the big areas like the bases and stuff like that. He paints the backgrounds. Uh, so my work-life balance is really, really important. Having a full-time job, being a parent, and being an artist at the same time, it's, it's kind of hard to juggle it a lot. But you just got to shut it down sometimes and, and go for what's important. You know, I'm not going to sit down and just do my work. I'm going to stop and spend time with my son get him out the house, you know, um, give my, myself some time to just breathe. That's very, very important for work-life balance. Um, don't overwork yourself, you know, communicate with people if you do have a deadline or something like that to me, communicate with them. And people understand, um, some people just take on so much work, you just get overwhelmed and you just you shut down and then you don't give out a good product. So work-life balance is very, very important to Make sure that you have your stuff in order, take care of what's important, and get the job done. What moves me the most in life is family. And that's, that's it, my family. Um, I don't get to see them a lot, but when I do, it's just like, I don't know, I sleep better when I'm home. I'm more relaxed when I'm at home. I feel way more creative, but my family is what pushes me and is my motivation. I feel like art is going in a really, really good direction all over. Um, you're seeing hip hop artists, you know, collab with graffiti artists such as Rick Ross with Mr. Brainwash, you know. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. Like art is not now getting popular, but it's, it's starting to be like it was in the 80s when graffiti was real, real hard and heavy. I'm not a graffiti artist myself, but that's 
the era around the 80s, early 90s, when it was like something that was really, really like, man, that's cool. And now it's becoming that cool thing again. Everybody wants to be an artist. Everybody wants to know an artist. Somebody wants to collab with an artist. And that is where I see art's going right now. It's just in a cool spot, man. They're getting more, artists now are getting way more spotlight in what they do. And people are interested in their talent. So the role as an artist in society is to take the creativity of that person's idea and bring it to life. Uh, you know, you, you ever been trying to explain something to someone and they're like, yeah, I understand what you mean, but then when they put it on paper or they design it on a computer, you're like, oh man, you did that, like, you, you brought it to life, thank you. That's the role of an artist in society, is to bring somebody's idea or your own idea into life and sharing it with the people. How I feel when I get done with a painting is just relieved. Like, I just feel like I'm floating in a way. Um, it's like, that's it. Like, that, that's it. Uh, sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could, you know, fix this or move that around. But once it's done, it's done. Uh, you don't want to mess it up no more. Um, and that's why I like to splatter my pieces when I'm done with them. It might take me a, a long time to complete it. But then once I splatter it, like that's it. From that first splatter, I'm no longer in control of the painting. It's, it's on its own, it's done. Future goals for me as an artist, um, really just getting my work out there, man. Actually having a solo show, a real solo show. Um, getting my work in the hands of people who really, really appreciate it. More people who appreciate art. And just, you know, building relationships with people and, and hopefully meeting other artists. Um, who are doing their thing as well, and just you know, just communicating with them, and you know, building that that network or a team of just artists. Because sometimes you need somebody to talk to to give you, you know, that little push, um, who's doing the same thing that you're doing. Um, you did some pieces with Big Crit. He got not, it? no artwork, but I did the um, flyers for his concert. Oh, yeah. But as far as just artwork, like painting. Currency is my first one. And what happened with that? That's the one. So we trying to meet him. The story for with currency is first concert I had did. Um, I did a little flyer for the, for the same spot. Fat Cat Boutique. Shout out to them. Oh, he always shot there. Huh? He always come here. Yeah, he always comes here. He always visits Fat Caps. Dang. They have some really really cool clothes. Next time you guys are in town or you visit Nashville, go to Fat Caps. They got a new store in Murfreesboro cool. as well. Um, so shout out to T, Joe, all of them over there, good people, man. Uh, so the first concert that the that he did here for me, I designed a flyer for it. Was like cool. Got to the concert, got his autograph. Since then, I was like, all right, next time I'm gonna definitely do a painting. You know, a flyer. That's nothing. You get millions of flyers. You know, people tagging you on Instagram and stuff like that. So um, I started on a piece on Sunday, I think, for him. He was coming here on. Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Anyway, um, started on a piece and then I had left work and I went home, finished it, and let it dry. And then I went to the store and I had it posted up, you know, kind of away from everybody, from the crowd. And he came in, you know, shaking hands, kicking it with the people, chopping it up, you know, taking pictures and stuff like that. And he stepped outside real quick. And he came back in after about like three, four minutes or so. And um, I was just sitting there and he walked by and I pointed to it and he was like, yo! And he grabbed it and he ran outside. And I was like, come back. Like, I gotta get a picture with you real quick. You know what I'm saying? I got a bag for it as well. So I got a picture with Currency, it was dope. And I did some graphic stuff uh, with a friend of mine a couple of years ago. We went down for um, Mardi Gras. And we stopped by um, Street Customs and we dropped it off. But he didn't show up that day. He was out doing his thing. We were left with Corner Boy. And them and uh, he remembered those. He still actually has those. So that was pretty dope to show him that. He was like, yo, I still got these. Like, you was the person that did that. It's like, it was dope to meet you. You know what I'm saying? It was cool, man. So I don't know where it is in New Orleans, whether it's at his house or the garage or whatever, but he has it. And that is just enough for me. C3 Art, thank you for tuning in to Art Life Vibes.